Hey YouTube, Travis here. So today we get to talk about timing. This is the 1980 Pook Maxi with the E50. And after this video, you'll be able to take what you've learned on this motor and apply it to other mopeds as well. The idea behind this video is that this is a nice, slow way that explains everything about timing. I'm going to try to do it using basic tools. We've got a socket set, a printable ruler, and a flathead and Phillips screwdriver and a sharpie. I'm also going to be using a piece of a cereal box later on, but I'll explain that when we get there. It's really nice if you have a piston stop and some feeler gauges, uh, but they're not totally required, especially when you're just setting stock timing. Okay, so I mentioned stock timing right there, but we're also going to talk about timing for a kit. So running timing that's way too advanced, aka stock timing, is a really easy way to seize your nice new kit. It's kind of up there with proper carburetor jetting, as well as choosing a gearing and pipe setup that doesn't let you rev way too high. Remember, you seize because your bike is running so hot that it actually breaks down the oil in your mixture. Okay, I'm going to grab my roommate Will. He's really good at explaining this, a lot better than I am. Here we go. Okay, quick refresher, your flywheel has two screws. Get a small flathead. Flywheel comes off. Okay, so first thing we have to do is find top dead center. Top dead center is when the piston is at its furthest point of travel along the cylinder, or when it's basically at the top of the cylinder. Okay, so we're going to need to find top dead center and mark it on our flywheel. In order to do this, pull a spark plug, get a spark plug socket, So once again, I try to make this tutorial with using only basic tools, but if you have a piston stop, it's a really good time to use it. Um, people go back and forth on using piston stops on little two strokes like this, but with this, we're not really going to be stressing anything. We just want to find the point where the, the piston just bumps in. Right, yeah, up at the top. And you want to make a mark on the engine case just above the flywheel, like say right up at the top here with the sharpie um, so you have a point of reference. And that point can be anywhere, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, whatever whatever works for you. Okay. Um, now turn the flywheel one direction, doesn't matter which direction, until the piston bumps up against the piston stop and then make a mark on your flywheel at that point. You know, using your reference mark on the engine case. Yep. Then turn the flywheel the opposite direction until the piston hits the stop again. Wow, I went in pretty far. <laughs> um, make another mark. Then you're going to measure to find the halfway point between these two marks and that'll be top dead center. You take that piston stop out and then it may, it may already be marked there. between the first mark and the second mark that I made four millimeters and I'll make a mark there which looks to be pretty much where my mark is right because we've timed this one before yeah. yeah but actually we just use that using the screwdriver so this this will be a better mark oh. it's so we're maybe almost a millimeter off or about a degree off doesn't really make that much of a difference. Right, especially on a stock bike like this. Yeah, but this is this is a slightly more accurate method. Sure. So that being said, you mentioned the screwdriver method, which if you don't have a piston stop is something you can do. So you just put it in through the spark plug hole until it touches the top of the piston and kind of move your move your flywheel back and forth until you find the point where the screwdriver sticks out of the cylinder the furthest. And up top, it'll be kind of hard. You have to really feel because it, it's it just not going to travel very much at the very top of the stroke. Yeah, it's pretty close. Pretty to close. Where we were. Yeah. It's really, especially on a stock bike, it's not going to make a bit of difference. Right. <laughs> but good to know for the piston stop trick. All right, cool. So we found top dead center. All right, so once again, I'm going to try and make this video using basic tools. If you have a set of feeler gauges, though, it's really, really nice. Uh, these are 0 0.016, 0 
inches right here, uh, and that's what we're going to be setting our point gap at. If you don't have feeler gauges, um, reading online, a small cereal box, like this came from a Wegmans Toasted Oats box, or a Girl Scout Cookies box, uh, that looks like really similar on that level. So that's something you can do, but it is nice if you have feeler gauges. Okay, so we're looking at the flywheel right here, and then zooming in on this, we're looking at our for our points. Right there. And, yep, see they can open and close right there. Right now they're actually slightly open. Um, but when they open, when the flywheel's turning around, the, the point at which they first open is when your spark will be in the fire. And to adjust the point gap, which we're going to be doing here real soon, there's this flathead screw right in there that you're going to have to loosen. Now, we're going to go back to top dead center. And the easiest way to do this is probably just going to be to stick your 0.016 inch piece of cereal box in between the two contacts of the points. Or you can get the feeler gauges. Or, yeah. yeah we have but this way we won't have to hold anything in there. We'll just That's leave true. the points closed on that. And then tighten down this screw here. Because right now it's loose and it's letting the top part of the points move around a little bit. And now that we have this stuck through there, we have the right gap. So we'll just tighten down the screw to hold it at that gap. Cool. Looks pretty good. Great. So we've successfully set our point gap, right? Yep. Great. Okay, so now we actually set our timing. Uh, we're going to set it to... Just want to set it to stock first? Yeah, which is, the Pook service manual is really vague on this, but we, f we figured that about 17 degrees before top dead center is, is a good place to be at. That one Pook timing chart said anywhere between 14 and 18, right? Yeah. But 17 is a pretty good, that's what people seem to be a consensus on on the forums. All right, so you're gonna wanna go line up your top dead center marks, and then you gotta figure out which way your flywheel rotates. There's gonna be an arrow. Um, this is on this on these Bosch flywheels. These are on uh, Pooks and Sacks actually, but the Sacks may rotate the other direction because I think it's on the opposite side of the engine case. But here, there's a little arrow pointing clockwise or pointing pointing this way, which means the flywheel while well, the engine's going is rotating this direction. So, I'm going to go to the top dead center mark, and since it's rotating this direction, this way, we're going to make marks this way for being before top dead center. Because this is top dead center, and the flywheel's turning this way, so here is going to be before top dead center. So, I have this, very cool, this nice paper ruler. And we're going to start at top dead center. And this is the really nice thing here. The, the Bosch flywheel that's on the uh, Pooks and the Sacks is 360 millimeters in circumference, which means one millimeter in circumference is one degree of rotation on the flywheel. If you have a different kind of moped, um, the easiest thing to do would be to measure the circumference of the flywheel, probably in millimeters, and then divide that by 360 degrees and then you'll have however many millimeters is equal to one degree of rotation. Now here we're going to make probably a mark, where's that, sharpie four, make sure this thing's stretched out all the way, 10 degrees before top dead center, 20 degrees, just for reference, and then a mark for where we want our timing to be. It's 17 degrees before top dead center. Right. I know it's like some people when they mark top dead center, they write a little TDC next yeah. to it just so they remember, but. Yeah, we might want to even do that. <laughs> okay, now here is the important part. You want to find, is as the flywheel rotates clockwise, 
there's going to be a point at which the points first begin to open. So I'm going to start here. And now as we're approaching top dead center, there you saw the points open. And this is going to be kind of hard to figure out at first. It's, it's difficult to see, but I think this will be accurate, accurate enough if we just do this by looking at where they first begin to open. Um, some people will put something really, really thin in between them and then kind of pull on it and find the point at which it can pull out. But for what we're doing, um, just eyeballing it is going to be definitely accurate enough. We'll get easily within a degree or so. I just kind of rock it back and forth sometimes to see if I get any movement. So it looks like it's just starting to open right here. And now we're going to see what point that is. That's actually decently retarded. Is it at 10? It's a, yeah, it's like 12. Okay. Um, so, yeah, what that means is that the spark begins to fire at about 12 degrees um, before top dead center. And that, but retarded meaning, I don't mean it as a slur, I mean the spark is firing later um, than stock as opposed to firing earlier, which would be above 17, like 20. And that's called being advanced. Okay. So, we're going to want to adjust the timing on this since it's not quite where we want it to be. So you're going to have to undo, there's, there's some screws holding the stator onto the engine case. Yeah. And it, this, usually there'd be, th at least as far as I've seen, I've usually seen three, this only has two, but and these are going to be really bad to get off. Oh, okay, that one's not too bad. And then you can, oh, this is, this is, this can be a pain. Theoretically, you can rotate the stator um, inside the flywheel. And if you rotate the stator in the direction that the flywheel rotates, that will retard the timing. And if you rotate it opposite the direction the flywheel rotates, that will advance the timing. And we're just going to need to be able to get this stator to move. There, OK, now it's, now it's starting to move. You can start to see. I'm kind of prying. I'm holding the flywheel. And I'm prying on the inside of one of these holes in the stator plate, prying against the flywheel just to get it loosened up a little bit, move back and forth. Yeah, now you see how the stator can, you can move the stator back and forth. So I'll try to do it by hand. Be careful though, because it can shift around and right here you can hear the magnet scraping on the flywheel, which isn't a good thing. Now that's pretty far advanced. Yeah, I just pretty much turned the stator fully advanced, almost fully advanced. Um, Just like that other video. Yeah, and we're at like, <laughs> 21. looks like, yeah, 22, 23. I could turn the stator even more advanced, but that uh, that's just, just don't do that. Right. Don't advance your timing like crazy. If you're running a stock bike, maybe it won't blow up, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, just don't do it. So now I have to go the other direction yeah. until we get to somewhere around 17, 18. Yep. On so a stock now, setup. Since the flywheel rotates clockwise, I'm going to attempt <laughs> to turn the stator clockwise. That thing really does not want to move, does it? Nope. This can be actually, what can make this easier is if you um, take the flywheel off. Yeah, I'm and sure. because it's keyed, what I sometimes do is just pull the whole flywheel off, then move the stator while it's off, and just put the fly not put the flywheel back on, but just set it on the crank and not tighten the nut down and just move it like that. Because yeah. it's still keyed, so it'll still be in the right place. Right. But it makes things a lot easier. But this is working. We're doing we're doing okay. This and to do that you need a flywheel puller. 
and we're trying to make this as simple as possible. Right. And this will work just fine. Okay, now, well, okay, that's too retarded. I'm sorry. So that was this like is, eight degrees? Yeah, something like that. This is just, you know, this will take a little while, especially when you're first doing it. You know, it's about like a 10 degrees. It's all, this is pretty much fully retarded. Okay, there we go. Now I'm moving it. Let's try this. What also can happen too, and you gotta be careful about this, is that I'm doing this without tightening the screws back down each time to check, and sometimes the stator will pull out a little bit and that'll just mess everything up. So make sure it's still seated against the engine case. Looks like it's moving a little easier now. Yeah, definitely is, but a pretty small movement in the stator will make a decently large adjustment in the timing since it looks like the stator can rotate back and forth a good 15 degrees or so, maybe even 20 degrees. And for, if you've worked on cars before, this is a, pretty similar to rotating the distributor back and forth to adjust the timing. The annoying thing about this though is obviously you can't do this while the moped's running. <laughs> Now, of course, if you do read that wiki article, there are tons of different ways to set the timing, but this is a way that seems relatively easy and something you can do without too many tools, which is what I want to show to a YouTube audience. You know, I'm probably making this a lot harder on myself. I'm going to tighten these screws back down to, not to tight, but to get in, get in there. Just Do you think it's slipping a little I bit? I think it's slipping quite a bit. Ooh, that's better. If you can hold it there, that's like perfect. Which? Oh, that's that's it. We're good. We're there. Right on. Going back to kits real quick, a good place to start is 15 to 16 degrees before top dead center and run a head temperature gauge. Basically, you're going to want to try to find a spot where at full throttle you're keeping well under 400 degrees and you keep retarding the timing until you get to that point. Okay, <laughs> so this is a lot easier if you don't lo loosen the screws too much. So they still hold the stator pretty much there. Right. I loosen them way too much. I hope I don't move the stator more as I tighten them down. I look like an idiot here, but it's because the magnet keeps pulling the screwdriver. Alright, so go ahead and pull your stuff back together. And then the spark plug goes back in. Cool. Now, just to show you that Will and I aren't two crazy people, we're going to take this thing outside and check it with a timing gun. Okay, just so you're prepared for it, and if you don't know, a timing light is kind of like a little strobe light. It flashes at the same speed the engine is firing. Okay, so one more thing before I leave you. So... A Puki 50, it'll run at a lot of different timing positions. It'll run really advanced, it'll run really retarded. You can even go so far as to make it run in reverse, as in you twist the throttle and the wheel spins the other direction. It's really important that you get it timed right. Please don't skimp on this, guys. Alright, until next time.